last time in the good Star Trek movie. Nothing that really connects to this one, so... Fuck it. And now the Next Generation team takes over the plots that don't make sense. This is Star Trek Generations. Star Trek The Next Generation was a big hit on TV for years, but in their first motion picture ride out, we got a pretty unbalanced, pretty nonsensical, and at times pretty annoying series of subplots that often result in this reaction. I hate this! So, let's not waste any time, let's see how the first attempt at filmdom went. We open with the voyages of the starship Corbell, as we see it doesn't have a very long run. <laughs> It's actually crimsoning the new Starship Enterprise, as retired Captain Kirk and whichever cast members would work for scale show up to give their blessing. I just want you to know how excited we all are to have a group of living legends with us on our maiden voyage. I remember reading about your missions when I was in grade school. Oh, really? You're my hero. I'd like you to meet the helmsman of the Enterprise B, Ensign Demora Sulu. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. My father's told me some interesting stories about you. Yes! Like how he originally wanted to be the captain of the Excelsior in Star Trek II, but you wouldn't let him. Uh, how you didn't show up to Gene Roddenberry's funeral, that was pretty douchey. Uh, and how you're just an all-round great big prick. It's a fascinating read. When did he find time for a family? Finding retirement a little lonely, are we? You know, I'm glad you're an engineer. With tact like that, you'd make a lousy psychiatrist. <laughs> I'm contractually obligated to like you. So as they go out on their first trip just for a routine test run, there's, say it with me now, a distress call. They're the only ship in range, and they don't have the proper necessities, but they're going anyway. I have trained you well. So it looks like an intergalactic tapeworm is threatening two ships, as Star Trek proves once again that anyone who is not Captain Kirk is a pure incompetent. Except for these guys, but let's face it, they kiss Kirk's ass all the time. Captain Kirk, I would appreciate any suggestions you might have. Y'all ready for this? First, move us within transporter range. Leave most people who want to make the us apart. Risk is part of the game, you want to sit in that chair. Why do we let anyone anywhere do anything without JFT Kirk? They get close and beam up as many of the survivors as they can. One of them is being played by Malcolm McDowell. Good to know, Kirk saved someone who would just end up killing him in the end. Antimatter discharge directly ahead. Might disrupt the field long enough for us to break away. But there's some techno babble that needs to be resolved, so Kirk goes down below to partake in what Star Trek does best. Vent porn. That's it! We're clear. You did it, Kirk! Bridge to Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk, please respond. Hey, Scotty, this is Captain Kirk saying. <laughs> Have Chekhov meet me on deck 15. So they see that Kirk has gone where most cast members want him to go before, and we cut to years later. We see our new crew of the Enterprise on the holodeck, still the most improbable of Star Trek inventions, as we see they're partaking in the HMS Pinnawarf. <laughs> Let's retract plank, not remove plank. I must confess, I am uncertain as to why someone falling into freezing water is amusing. Oh, it's all in good fun, Data. I do not understand. Oh, Data, you've only been here 12 seconds and already your bit is old. Do something unexpected. Get it? Got it. That was not funny. Oh no, you want unfunny? Wait until he gets the emotion chip. That's right, there's an emotion chip in this movie. A device that, well, is pretty much humanity in a hunk of metal. Which Data now feels he has to put in, seeing how he did the unspeakable crime of pushing someone into water. So yes, you could say that his gross spurned from getting a woman wet. <laughs> 
But Captain Picard then finds out some devastating news that he decides to keep from most of the crew. Looks like the observatory took quite a beating. Will you begin an investigation? I'll be in my ready room. Sir, make it so. I thought you Just do it! Boy, dodging responsibility, being totally emotional and illogical? He's acting like a real boss. But they do find one survivor, though. Malcolm McDowell's character, who we saw years before. Saren. Dr. Tolian Saren. What, no Lord of the Rings clip? What? You mean for the four years I've been doing this show, I've played every single clip from the Lord of the Rings movies? Well, great, now what am I supposed to do? Oh. Um... You ever notice how the Sauron here sounds like the Sauron from... the X-Men comics that was only around very briefly? Don't know how many of you remember that. It had to be pretty hardcore to get that reference. But that's not important. We have Data's annoying emotion chip to exploit. I believe this beverage has produced an emotional response. Well, it looks like he hates it. Oh, yes! I hate this! It is revolting! More? Please. Well, I guess it wasn't too bad, as long as they don't exploit it anymore. <laughs> no, Jordy, I have not. Open sesame! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they go on with this for a while. Very funny, Mr. Tricorder. I love it! I cannot help myself! <laughs> okay, does someone slip him the Rob Schneider chip? Because I swear, I'm ready to smack him! Just see if you can help me get these panels open, will you? Make it so. Okay, somebody please up the badassness of this movie. Ah! Thank you, McDowell! So Sora fights for his research and Data Chicken's out because of the emotion chip. But a Klingon ship appears and beams him out while also attempting to kidnap Jordy. Yeah, I know, big shock, Jordy gets kidnapped in Star Trek. I'm sure they put him in a holding cell with Rob and April O'Neil and Princess Peach. They start a poker game in every dungeon. But while that's going on, we do find out why Picard is so bummed out. You never met my brother and his wife, did you? No. Robert. So opinionated. <laughs> Very gentle. What's happened? Burned to death in the fire. Um. Yeah, pretty heavy stuff to lay in the first Star Trek Next Generation film. I wouldn't mind so much, except that it's made even stranger by the fact that they were only featured in one episode, are rarely referenced, and even here we just get a few sideways pictures of them. It's kind of odd to devote so much time to this when really we know so little about them. How are we supposed to get emotionally connected to characters that we never see in the movie, or only reference very briefly? I mean, it's true- Hold on one second. Hello? Oh no. My mother's uncle's nephew's father's brother's sister's cousin's son's grandfather's great aunt's niece just died? <gasps> Melissa! <laughs> Feel bad for me! So we find out that Sauron is teamed up with the Duras sisters, a duo of Klingon terrorists who are helping Sauron out with his plan in exchange for his deadly weapon designs. Only one other person knows what Sauron is looking for, and it turns out it's that chick from Theodore Rex. He just cares about getting back to the Nexus. What's the Nexus? It's a doorway to another place that we call the Nexus. What happened to you? It was like being inside joy. Ew! I had a feeling of what they did behind the scenes on The View, but... Ew! They should call it the Ew! If you go, you're not gonna care about anything. All you'll want is to stay in the Nexus. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to find the Nexus. Sounds friggin' awesome. So the captain and Data try to figure out where Sauron is heading using a room on the ship that they've never used before and... will never use again. But it looks cool. However, Data is having trouble handling his emotions. I cannot continue with this investigation. Are you having some kind of malfunction? No, sir. I simply do not have the ability to control these emotions. 
part of having feelings is learning to integrate them into your life, Data. No matter Sir, what the circumstances, you will not be deactivated. You're an officer on board this ship, and I require you to perform your duty. Just like the duties I dodged earlier because of my emotional matters. But I'm the captain. Nah, 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 nah. So they find out that Sauron's going to wipe out a star to change the direction of the Nexus to make it come towards him, wiping out all other life inhabiting the planets in that solar system. They make their way there, but the Dura sisters threaten them with hostage Jordy. Can't trust them. For all we know, they killed Jordy. They might kill you, too. We did not harm your engineer. Then return him. In exchange for what? Me. I will be your prisoner. But first, you must beam me to the surface so that I can speak with Sauron. We'll consider it a prisoner exchange. So, really, with no plan in mind, they beam the captain down to the planet to talk to Sauron while they beam Jordy back to the ship. Is there an amount of time he's gonna stay down there? Or couldn't the Enterprise just beam him back later, seeing how they're more powerful? Is there a reason the uniforms suddenly don't match and nothing's adding up? Oh, it was terrible. They tried forcing my name to Toby. So Picard tries to reason with Sauron, while it turns out Jordy's visor has been bugged with a camera so they can figure out where's the best point to penetrate their shields. For God's sake, nobody checked him out beforehand? I can't go through airport security without having my BALLS TOUCHED! And yet they never inspected this guy who just came off an enemy ship! Giving up our freedom's my butt! But hey, at least it puts Data in a better mood. Can you find a way to scan for life forms? I would be happy to, sir. I just... I love scanning for life forms. Life forms. You tiny little life forms. You precious little life forms. It's sing along time again. This side of the internet sing life forms. This side sing row, row, row your boat. Row, 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 row your boat gently down the stream. You tiny little life forms. Do, 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 do. You precious little life forms. Do, 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 do. Everybody sing along! I said sing along! I'm not continuing the review unless you do! Yeah, what are you gonna do? Cut the commercial?